today. 80% of businesses don't sell. To be a part of the 20% that do, and at maximum value, you'll need a successful strategy. Welcome to the Defenders of Business Value podcast, where we interview today's top professional advisors who help business owners create, preserve, and most importantly, transfer value. If you want actionable tips that will increase your business value, stay tuned. The podcast starts now with your host, Ed Mysoglad. I had the real pleasure of talking to Mike Finger of Exit Oasis. Mike is a truly a wonderful guy to to get to know. He he and I kind of play in the same sandbox and we we both have the the heart for the small business owner that you know, the risk of not selling is considerable and doing pre-sale planning and structuring and coaching that can make the difference between whether a business is saleable or not. And so I had the privilege and it really was a privilege to to sit and visit with him. And we talked about a lot of different things, to be honest with you. And it was just a wonderful conversation. So if you want to know what's going on from a planning standpoint of a business, listen into our conversation. So enjoy this conversation with Mike Finger of Exit Oasis. So I'm your host, Ed Mysaglan. I teach business owners how to identify and remove risks in their business so they can sell their business at maximum value when they want, how they want, and to whom they want. I can't tell you how excited I am today. Uh, I get to interview Mike Finger of Exit Oasis. Even though um, Mike and I sometimes play in the same sandbox, Mike is, oh my gosh, he is doing some great work in building awareness of the need to prepare to exit. He's one of those people that I love to watch on LinkedIn. And if you don't follow him, you really should because he is on the battlefield of defending business value. So here's a little bit about Mike. Mike is a successful business owner and founder of ExitOasis.com. Over the last 25 years, Mike has bought and sold multiple businesses. Building his first business was a rewarding challenge, but what really captivated him was when he was able to sell it. Here's a quote that defines Mike and the service he provides. Selling that business was a miracle in my life. It changed everything, but it almost didn't happen. I was 10 years in with 50 employees when I found out that the business was unsaleable, but we moved forward. What we did to the business made the sale possible and it transformed my life. We want to help other small business owners experience that same miracle. So Mike, welcome to the show. I'm so stoked to have you. I'm thrilled to be here. I appreciate the invitation. Well, to begin with, tell me where did Exus Oasis come from? And I guess fill in the, the pieces of what you've been doing, you know, throughout the, uh, from the start to, to now. Sure, sure, sure. Um, it, well, the, I mean, the genesis of Exit Oasis for me was my personal experience. Uh, when I first started to look at selling my first business, uh, I found the space terrifying as a, as a small business owner. I, uh, um, I have since and, and over the years dealt with some incredibly effective and helpful professionals in the field. Uh, but you and I both know that uh, there are brokers who are real jackasses out there. And uh, I had occasion to run into some of them early on when I was a business owner. And so I found the space terrifying. I found it hard to learn. I found most of the material that was out there was designed uh, and targeted towards businesses that were 10 times the size that my business was. Uh, they'd call a business small. And then they talk about it's $20 million of revenue. And, and I, I, you know, I, I just glaze over because we know that, if, you know, subsequently I've learned that some of the lessons don't apply. It's not, it, you know, it's not the same for a truly small business. So, you know, for me, it was that, uh, that desire to help other small business owners find a safe place to explore the exit of their business, to explore the topic, to learn, uh, to find out what they don't know they don't know. So. Well, awesome. Yeah. One of the, one of the things that, that you, you cite, and I've seen the, the same statistic is that 90% of companies aren't sellable. What, what does unsellable mean? What are the attributes that make a business unsellable? Well, I can tell you what made my first business unsellable. Um, as you mentioned in the, in the introduction, I had, uh, when I, when I looked to sell the business, I had, uh, I had 50 employees. We were doing about 5 million in revenue. Um, 
And uh, after several conversations with with a, with competitors, with brokers, um, I, I I started going down and, and checking the list of unsellability for myself. I was too owner dependent. There wasn't enough cash flow. Um, the systems weren't mature enough. I, I, I mean, right right down the list of things that uh, make a business. Um, difficult, if not impossible, to transition. Now, when I say unsellable, does that mean that I could have, if I had put a $100 price tag on the door that somebody wouldn't have given me 100 bucks for it? Yeah, yeah maybe. But there's no way in the world I was going to do that. And uh, uh, I, I think that's true for most small business owners. We start to have a vision of what exit means. And then I think for the vast majority of us, when we start to engage exit, we discovered that there is a dramatic difference between a survivable business and a sellable business. Yeah, we and and I see this the same thing. And I and I guess when I look at the the business owner, and you're probably experiencing the same thing. The definition of sellable differ. It, there's a, a spectrum of what that means to to a business owner, and I mean our. Some of the work that you've been doing, it seems as though is resonating. I mean, are people starting to warm up to, look, you have to, there, there's, there's enough information out there that you should at least know that you should be doing some preparation for the sale. Are you seeing that in your practice? I, I am. I, it's, it's, it's encouraging. It's, uh, it feels to me like a fairly substantial undertaking. And, and here's what I mean by that it is that, the industry as a whole is compensated when businesses sell. And we both know that brokers sell businesses only after they have a conversation and qualify. So for most in the industry, there's a vested interest there in letting the business owner believe that they have a sellable business because I don't call up the broker if I don't think I can sell my business. Um, sometimes it feels like we're fighting that wave. I, I, it's never my intention to be discouraging to the small business owner. I am a small business owner. I, I believe in their ability to do remarkable things when they have the goal identified. And so what we hope to do is to help small business owners wake up to the reality that, as you pointed out, uh, the percentages are incredibly discouraging when it comes to the likelihood that any individual small business sells successfully. Best numbers I can find is uh, 20%. Uh, those are the most optimistic numbers I can find. If you've got better, point me in the right direction, right? I mean, what, what do you see out there? I think I, I, I tire of everybody's an exit planner these days. It doesn't matter what discipline you are. Uh, it seems everybody wants to be in the space, but they're only, they're only interested in, in what cert as lead gen for whatever their particular service is, whether it be accounting or, and brokerage too. You know, I, I, um, I think the statistic that I've seen, is that 87% and I, and don't ask me where I, 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 I've looked for years for where I, I ran into it, but it always reminded me that 87% of companies don't have any kind of professional representation when going to market. And that's a staggering number, not just from, from representation, just from an education standpoint. So I know in our practice that when we do value work or we're doing prep work, that it, it inverses. We can, 80% of our companies do sell because they are, they're educated on the value. Why, you know, why, if I have 80% of my business tied up in this one customer, I've, I've worked with Joe for 30 years. Why wouldn't he work with you? Well, right. Yeah. The guy's stroking a check and he doesn't, he, he doesn't know whether Joe's going to come. So that's why preparing the business and preparing, just educating on how the buyer is going to look at it is an entirely different thing. But yeah, statistically speaking, we inverse it. It goes 80% that uh, you know, we're successful. That's um, fabulous. That's fabulous. What do you see in the market as a whole? I mean, do you, does that 20% number resonate or yeah, do you, yeah. do you think it's higher than that? Yeah, we're, we're a little higher. We're, 
we're we're running probably 30 maybe okay. but but not much not much more than that yeah and you know the more attractive businesses you know the manufacturing you know, distribution you know, professional services you know it, it probably goes even a little higher than that because it just seems that there's more access to to um to information there's more people that are that are seeking to serve them yep um but it's still again you know we're still running into those same business owners that show up and say well this is what i want make it happen well it, right yeah, yeah. It, it just doesn't it doesn't work that way and you know over the course of our you know 40 years you know, as we do business valuation we do equipment appraisal we do all these things to help the business owner recognize where the value is in their co- in their companies and the sp- you know and i can tell you each time i present a valuation you know i stopped writing reports it's now you and i are having conversations so it's more of a deposition ask your questions because you know these are the questions that the other side's going to ask and you need to you need to be in a position to understand it yeah so yeah but but as far as you know it, i'm not certain you know, and one of the questions I was going to ask you is, is the tsunami of business owners yeah. you know, um, that are coming to market. I, I, I don't know if you've seen it. I haven't seen the, the big wave that they keep talking about. I think it's a fascinating subject because I can speak to, to both sides of that argument pretty, pretty easily. I mean, if you look at the demographics, it, it's really hard not to believe that some there's some wave out there, right? I mean, how, how, <laughs> right. how can there not be? Uh, but then when you look at the individual decision making of a business owner and what that translates into, it's really easy to make an argument that, uh, I, I, you know, don't buy a surfboard yet, man. It's, it, <laughs> the big wave's not coming. Right. So I don't know. Right, what, what are your thoughts on it? What do you see? Well, you know, I'm looking. So I wrote an article or it, I haven't. I, it's in edit now. Um, should you euthanize your business? And yeah. you know what? If you want to, you want to write. You're relevant. If you're 75 years old and you're relevant and your health is okay, and you want to ride that thing into the sunset because you've owned it for 50 years, well, God bless you and go do it. And Amen. you know, here's how. Here's how this. If you're going to do it, this is how you want to do it. Um, so I wrote an article about the. You know, it was a follow up in our local, um, our business journal where the. Uh, author, as soon as everybody turns 65, you know, we've got to prepare for the big wave and you know, everybody knows that story that, you know, the tsunami's here seven years later, it's still not here, but every, all the baby boomers are 72. Now, now here's my article of, yeah, now we have something to talk about because now it's, it's, it's getting closer. The problem, and I'm certain you see the same thing is that businesses aren't updating you know they're not you know doing the capital expenditures keeping the equipment up doing all the things instead they're siphoning and so the challenge that we have is you know the buyer that shows up they're going to ding you from a value standpoint you know in equipment appraisal world it's the cost to cure if i have to update all the equipment in order for me to make this thing go where where do you think it's going to come from so we're seeing we're seeing some of that yeah, I, I sold the last small business I owned at the end of 2018, um, and I'm I, I, I'm I'm I don't think I've owned my last small business, but I I'm looking forward to being a buyer, not a seller, over the next five years. I, I think I think the, the the true test of the tsunami um, hypothesis will be what happens with the next downturn. Because you and I both know there's an awful lot of small business owners out there that are riding the ride up right now. And uh, 65 feels a lot older when you're dropping growth by 15% a year than it does when you're gaining 15% a year. So uh, that's, uh, that's good. I, I think that will test the theory. If we don't see the wave at that point, I don't think it's coming. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I was, so I have, um, in, in, in this podcast, so I've, I've talked to a number of, of people about this and most of them, you know, they're, they know it's there. They're, it's just not defined as it was promised. 
You know what I mean? It, yep. You know, it's okay. They got to do something, but what are they going to do? I, so I'm, I'm a, a graduate over at Butler University and I do some work over there. And one of the things that I really am encouraged by is a lot of these universities are getting involved in small businesses where they might be succession plans, you know, that they can come in, you know, you get a millennial, you know, their credit's pretty good, you know, credit, meaning credit that they can borrow money to do it, got seller financing, and you're getting some people that can buy into some of these small businesses. And I know at Butler, they have um, uh, a business, it's called the Business Accelerator, and, and they're actually doing deals. And that's, mm. that's some big, you know, that's a, if, the, if the universities are getting into it, you know, you know it's a fairly safe bet of what, where, where this thing's going. Yeah, well, I tell you what, here's my prediction. I'm, I, I, will put the, I will etch this in stone. Uh, there is going to be a tsunami. Uh, I suspect it's going to be a tsunami of disappointment. Um, it, it's, it, it, I don't know that we're going to have a bunch more sales because even if a lot more people want to sell, where are the buyers coming from? Is it, I mean, where's the where's the dramatic increase in the number of informed, capitalized buyers that are yeah. going to help out these small business owners? So, do I? I, I think we're probably going to see an awful lot more, a higher number of small business owners disappointed by their inability to exit. Uh, right. No. Well, I, I I don't disagree with you, and and I think at the same time, I think that the business owner that doesn't recognize that that the buyer that's showing up that they're treating it as an investment not because not the way you did it i didn't want to you know start the business because i was you know changing my you know career i'm i'm i got displaced or whatever i'm starting my own business screw you i'm gonna go you know i can do it better than you instead right. those buyers are showing up saying you know what i need a 30 percent return for the risk that i'm taking yep you know that and and that's some of the challenge that I experience with with some of the people we work with is that there's no concept of, of of that that this is an investment, not just a means for to to fill the checkbook. You know, oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and even if the investment is as lowbrow as I need to be able to buy groceries and make the payments on the debt I incur to buy this business. How many businesses do we see? How many owners do we know that want to sell their business that don't have results that even meet that minimum standard, oh, right? Without question. Most of the listings that I surf online, it's like, no, 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 no. From that, just that basic standard, here's the math on the payment, on the, uh, on the amount you want. Here's what your cash flow is. Why don't I just have a big pile of cash and start it on fire on your front lawn? I would be so much further ahead. Yeah. Um, no, you're, yeah. you're, you're exactly right. In fact, um, I had a, a difficult client once and he was, he was just, he was ruthless on, on, from a value standpoint. And finally, I mean, and he wasn't making any money and that's what he, obviously he was mad at. He needed someone to take it out on. So I took a, a picture of the signing bonus at McDonald's. So there was a, it's $24,000. I mean, and that's, that's what this guy was making. And I'm like, sure. why? Yeah. I mean, all I got to be able to do is, is dip fries. I, yeah. I mean, why would anyone do that? And right. you don't understand, you don't, and this is, I'm certain your favorite. You don't understand the potential. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, and it's real. And, and we've been small business owners, and 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 I've felt that it's so real when it when those words come out of my mouth. The problem is, is that then I became a buyer, and my reality is different. And so I don't have to care about what your reality is as the seller because nothing about your reality changes the fact that the bank's going to want my monthly payment. Nothing's going to keep my mortgage from uh, check from needing to be written. And that, those, I, I mean, one of the things we've tried really hard to do at Exit Oasis is, is, is break it down to the, the simplest terms, right? Because this is a complex topic. You and I both know that we could 
we could pick some narrow technicality and spend two hours talking about the ins and outs of it and and, and the tricks of it. And, and that's all very real. The problem is, is it doesn't apply to most small business owners. The right. problem is, is that it's an industry that's that, that's compensated based on their ability to solve complications. And I'm thrilled that they're there to do that because I've used and, and sold businesses because of their ability to do that. But only after I had built a sellable business, yep. All, everything else comes after that. Everything else comes after my results by my business. That's that's the simple reality. That's a mantra that we we, we talk to to owners about is that everything else comes after that. If you're not achieving basic results that allow a buyer to meet those two basic needs, then forget about everything else yep. and change the business so it can do that. So tell me the process behind your service. How does that, how does that work and how does somebody effectively use you? Sure. Sure. Well, we've got, uh, we've got a couple things going right now. Uh, the main thing that we're focusing on right now is our free email newsletter. That is an opportunity for the small business owner to get a consistent exclusive content message about what it means to build a business uh, and create a business that you can sell. Um, and so we we curate great content that we find from around the web. I am an agnostic when it comes to where the content comes from. Uh, if it's if it's good content, if it speaks to the average small business owner, we'll put it on the site. Um, and that's part of the reason why you'll see a lot of different voices on the site. Some you'll agree with, some you won't agree with. Uh, but that's that's the concept behind that is that we want to give a small business owner access to multiple different messages and messengers that allow them to start to hear things that resonate for them. Um, we've just launched at the end of last month, our first online course. And again, bas back to basics, uh, the name of the course is, will I be able to sell my small business? Designed exclusively to answer that question for the small business owner. And when I say small, Ed, I, I really mean small. I, I don't mean the, like I said, the, the 20 million this or the 50 million that. Um, I mean the, the, the guy, the plumber who's got four guys. Sure. I, I, I mean the, the salon owner that's got, you know, three chairs. It's what does it mean? And will you be able to sell that business? And what are the basics um, stripped down of what a business you can sell looks like? And so then uh, from that, um, uh, we, we do coaching and that is again, designed for the truly small business owner. And that is something where we become that voice of conversation for that small business owner on a monthly basis. We're not, uh, we're not consultants. We're not going to spend uh, 40 hours a, a month with that small business owner. What we are is that voice that says, okay, you want out in 18 months. Let's talk pragmatically about what it takes to get to the place where when you finally reach out to the broker, when you finally pick up the phone and call ad hey, because you're ready to get going, um, what uh, what does the business need to look like to give you the best chance to sell that business as possible? You know, and I, I think that's that's so great that you're doing that. And because you know what? The risks are so much higher with with those people. They need that exit. They need that business to be converted to cash so they can do whatever, whether it be retirement or whatever's next. But I can assure you it is, it is, it is certainly more important than, than I don't, and I don't mean to, to, to minimize the, you know, the lower middle market, but you know, those guys, the, the smaller the business, the greater the risk. And hey, they're going to get 10 instead of 12 million because they're, <laughs> I, and I'm I'm there with you. I mean, more power to them. You've built that successful business. You deserve a successful exit. You and I have both sat across the table and seen the tears as the business owner starts to realize that not only aren't they going to get the house in Florida, but their retirement plans have just blown up in their face mm -hmm. because this assumption that they had about their ability to exit that business, the assumption they had about value that was based on something that isn't real. I, I am a huge believer in informed choice. I, I have no problem with a small business owner who comes to that, you know, who, who, who says, 
listen, I'm going to drive this train until it goes off the tracks, right? If you want to be a business owner into your 80s, fabulous. Um, if you're doing that because you didn't know that you didn't have a business that you can sell, to me, that's devastating. Yeah. And um, that's that's what we're hoping to help. Yeah. It, it is an under certainly an underserved area. And, and like I said, when, and that's what, that's what we've tried to do in our practice is get far enough in front and just say, look, you know, it, it does us, neither of us any good to take you to the market if you're not ready. And I know you're looking for the needle in the needle stack. It's just not there. And right. uh, so yeah. what do you do, Ed? I mean, how do you sell medicine to people who don't know they're sick? Well, the first for us, we, we do some, the self-assessment. So we're, we do value builder, the value builder sure. shop. And, and yep. you know what, this isn't my, those aren't my answers. Those are your answers. And you know, that, that addresses, or at least gets the ball rolling as far as thought goes. We then move into, all right, let's talk about value. Let's sit down and, and let's dig into to value. We'll either do a limited scope valuation or, you know, we can, we can get, we can get pretty deep into it. Most of them, you know, choose not to, but we get into the valuation and we look and we say, all right, here's the landscape of all the companies that are selling just like yours. Here's the attributes that you have. Let's compare them to what's selling. Now, do you have any questions? <laughs> and so we start down that path and now all of a sudden it's like, yeah. Oh, I, I understand that my cash flow ratio is only 5% and all these other companies are 20, 25%. That doesn't mean they didn't sell. They just didn't get a premium. So now what are you right. going to do? And then, you know, and then we back after we do the valuation, we have the number. Let, all right, let's back into this. It's got to answer three questions. Can I pay myself? Can I pay my debt? Can I get a return of, and more importantly, on my investment? You can answer those three things. We got the puzzle, the pieces of the puzzle put together. Now we need to address some of the other you know, marketability challenges. I, we understand the X's and O's. Now it's actually someone that's going to, to write a check. That's, that's how we do it. Yeah, absolutely. And it makes perfect sense. Um, uh, part of what we are struggling with and that what our, we knew our challenge would be from, from the very beginning with that market is that we have to figure out how to penetrate and get attention on this topic before someone reaches, I'm ready to sell. Because when you reach, I'm ready to sell. I know for myself personally, I reached, I'm ready to sell on my first business and I was about four years away from yeah. being sellable. And that was an incredibly hard four years. I almost didn't make it. I can't count how many times. And you and I both know, and that was choice. I mean, I wasn't at, I want to sell or I need to sell because I got sick. I wasn't there because I got, you know, of some external influence that forces a sale. I was lucky enough to just have gotten mentally to the place where I was starting to burn out, but was able to find the energy to move forward. So uh, finding a way to penetrate into that space, that's, I mean, that's part of the reason why we've been pushing our content out there with, you know, we've tried to be entertaining and engaging and create some, uh, some content around this topic that maybe competes a little bit with the uh, uh, the fact that I can binge watch Stranger Things. <laughs> well, I, I so, hear you, uh, and I'll I'll tell you the other thing, and the other thing that I that I like, and and like I said, we're kind of cut from the same cloth. Is that look, you know, some of our predecessors, you now they used exit planning as lead gen, and we we talked we touched on it earlier, and I think the business owner is reluctant to to say, you know what, maybe these guys are different, you know, and I don't know what your your sales cycle is, but I, I know ours is considerably longer now. And you know what? Get to know us, you know, j hop on our webinars, listen to this podcast, do, you know, there's plenty of hay out there. There, there truly is. And if I don't care if you yeah. go to us, but at least, I mean, I, I do to a certain extent, but, but there's, there's plenty of practitioners out there 
and just understanding that you have to be prepared. And I don't care, like I said, I don't care if you use us, but you, you do need to, you need for the sake of your family, your employees, and for everything else in the business, you need to take the opportunity to, to prepare, to prepare it because you're, you're going to get punched in the face if you don't. Oh, amen. Amen. And let me ask you a question about that. Do you think most small business owners haven't asked the question or do they, do you think most small business owners think they know the answer is yes, I will be able well, to Well, they've sell. been, they've been rocking, you know, their business for, you know, since they, you know, since they started or bought it or however, and you know, who are you? You're an outsider. You don't know more about my business than me. How in the, I can assure you who the hell wouldn't want this business. I mean, look at it. I mean, right. I understand, you know, yeah. it, you know, I, I haven't, you know, put, bought the new lathe that I should have bought, but you know what? Who wouldn't want this? I mean, I can't tell you. I have one guy said, you know, I got a stack of letters. I, I have a stack of letters from brokers all around the country telling me that they have a buyer for this business. Uh, I know <laughs> you're kidding. And, uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, there's, there's that. I, that's so funny. I, in fact, I wrote an article that was called run and hide. The business brokers are coming because of that very thing. I, I think that creates an incredibly destructive dynamic for the small business owner because they figure I must be worth chasing if people are chasing me. Right. I must be able to sell if the broker wants to talk to me only to discover when I talk to brokers and I ask them, it's one of the first questions I ask a new broker is, OK, if you talk to 10 small business owners, what percentage of those businesses are real prospects for you after you after you hear the numbers? Ten percent is the most common answer. No, and, I get. and that's that's right. And I you got you have that, I think, is is a destructive I don't want to say misleading, but it, it, because they're, you know, years ago, it used to be 80% of the people that, that called on a particular business, never bought that particular business. So, right. so theoretically, I mean, it's not misleading, you know, but I, I just, I think there's a better way to educate the, the business owner. And that's, you know, the, the work that you're doing, the work we're doing here. Um, but I'll tell you the other thing that, and it'll make you cringe, but you know, the, those folks that are going to seminars and showing up, you know, right stroking a $40,000 check so they can, uh, they get their business valued. I don't know. Have you run across that and up, up your way? I haven't. I haven't. Yeah. Uh, so there's a, there's a company that, that goes out. Holy buckets, Ed, how I'm in the wrong business. How do I get me well, some of that? You, you haven't had the opportunity to unwind it, you know, because, oh, well, man. because I mean, I mean, you come out of Crazy. you come out of one of these seminars, and you are stoked that you know every single person on this planet is going to want is going to want my business, and it's just not it's just not that way. And they, I mean, it is. I'll send you I'll send you the stuff. It's it's. Oh yeah, my goodness. please you, do. You'll sit there and go, <laughs> and, and and now that that's a challenge. And the the model used to be, and this is going twenty years plus. You know, they would have affiliates and they would, you know, they would, it was a traveling show. They would, they would do this in different markets and then they would find shops like ours to, to actually do the sale. And then the first thing out of our mouths is, yeah, that valuation, we'd have to unwind everything that, uh, you know, that it just doesn't work that way. It, 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 your million dollar purchase price is not going to command a, you know, a 10 multiple. Just, that just doesn't happen. So. Yeah, I'll send right. it to you. Um, so where do you think value is created? Employees or the owner? Um, I, I think the owner creates the business, um, and I think the business creates the value. I, I think the uh, uh, it, it is that thing that I can transfer to someone else where the value mm. resides. Uh, but I'm a firm believer that the owner is, is the one that sits in the chair. They make the decisions. They decide how to engage the variables. So uh, I don't know who makes the music, the conductor or the orchestra, mm. right? I mean, it's, it's a little bit of both. Um, but I think, the, uh, I, I think ultimately it's the owner's responsibility 
to engage this question. And I think, personally, I think that's where the biggest challenge is. And I, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what I was going to tell people the one thing is, right? What is the one thing that that creates a business that you can sell? And I am convinced that I've discovered what that one thing is, Ed. And that's the, uh, uh, that is a business owner with the intent to create a business that they can sell. Um, it, it is the intent. Uh, it, they don't have to do it perfectly. They don't have to. They, there's a hundred different programs or 400 different books or di there are a lot. of. But if they start with the intent to say, I want to create a business that I can get out of someday successfully. Well, then they can ask the next question, which is, you know, what does that business look like? And what are the characteristics and all of those things? But all of that comes uh, after intent. And so uh, you know, what creates value? What creates value is an owner with intent. That's interesting. Value. I and I'm certain you plow into the same business owners that, you know, they're making a couple hundred thousand dollars and say, all right, you make the transition from lifestyle to investment. All right. This is you move from the lifestyle business into that. This is an income producing asset. And when they're faced with that, they can't pull the trigger that, you know what, I'm, I like this 200 grand a lot better than taking this hundred grand and give it to somebody to run the business. So how, how do you get around that? Yeah, I, I don't I don't know if you do. I, I, I I'm reminded of a, a small business I was looking to buy. It was actually a small coin laundromat. And, uh, you know, I had a conversation. I, you know, I was active conversation with probably a dozen different business owners at that time as a potential buyer. And, you know, this guy and I got a little further down the path than most. And but he finally said, uh, I don't I don't think I'm ready to sell. And I and I we had had a we had built enough of a relationship where I said, well, what? Tell me what, you know, what's the thing, what's keeping you from doing? And he said, I don't think I'm ready to give up the buckets of quarters yet. I mean, it came down to that basic of a, uh, the feeling he got when he was doing that was worth more than any value that we were talking about at the time. And that was clearly not something I was ever going to overcome. And again, I, I have the luxury in the space that I work in that I genuinely don't care if someone sells their business. I don't. Uh, success for me, I don't get paid based on commission. We don't we don't make money if you choose to if you change your mind at the last minute, there's no skin off exit oasis's nose. What we want to do is make sure that you're building a business that you're creating the structures and the systems that allow you to make the choices yeah. that you want to make. And if that choice is cuz you and I both know that a business that's easy to sell is a pretty nice business to own, right? Because it's not dependent on me and it produces some cash flow and all of these things start to stack up. And you know what? You want to keep that sucker for the next 15 years? Yeah. Fabulous. Fabulous. But keep it and maintain it in a way that when you change your mind 18 months from now, you're a phone call to the broker, not three years of financial returns and then a yeah. phone call to the broker. So I, I, lifestyle versus investment. I, I don't know. I mean, my business was dramatically more profitable when we sold it than when I was at that stage four years earlier when I realized it was unsellable. But I don't know if I personally ever got into the make this an investment place. Uh, it was what it was. It was a lifestyle business that provided a good potential lifestyle for an owner. And while that may not be as sellable as the investment based business, sure. it's still I, I, that's sellable. Yeah. And, and, and so to me, the wall is sellable versus unsellable. And once we get crawl over that sellability wall, now, now there's choices and a lot of legitimate different directions an owner can can. No, can, that that's can fabulous. Take. In so. fact, I, I I thought about that, but but you articulated it really well. That uh, that wall, that uh, you know, it sellable versus unsellable is 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 superior to you know, owner operated versus investment. Yeah, yeah, and. and the, the, the hard part, you tell me, Ed, what percentage of small businesses in operation today are on the sellable side versus the unsellable side of that wall? Gut, gut, 
gut feel. I, I, I mean, my numbers I put out are eighty percent, right? Because we we make up numbers <laughs> in this industry, so no, I'm making I, that I one. Think, I think the 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 part that skews it for me, and and again, I see the same statistics, too. and I believe that. Those are the ones that are reported from brokers, all right? So I'm just right. curious to know what is that group that did not use professional representation? What's, what's, are they more sellable than going to a broker? You know what I mean? That you come to a broker because you, you have, you've shopped it yourself and you couldn't do it. Now you're looking for a different market that you probably don't have access to. Yeah, could be the you know the the quiet sales that happen uh, that that we don't hear about. Who yeah. who knows, right? I mean, it is it, those numbers don't get reported; they'll never get reported. But I've never talked to anyone in the in the industry that feels that those unreported numbers are sufficient enough that the small business owner should be op, uh, optimistic <laughs> about their opportunity to sell. Right? I mean, this is a this is a negative. Um, this is a negative wave coming at you. This, the, the, yeah, uh, that, that, that's my struggle. As, I, as we alluded to earlier, I think there's too many small business owners out there that are defaulting to the belief that their small business must be sellable because yeah. it's 20 years old. It must be sellable because they survived when so many others failed. Um, all of these very important, satisfying uh, vital results that don't create a business yeah. you can sell. Well, I'll tell you, I, um, so I reached out to the internal revenue service and I, and I have not gotten a response back because I wanted to see. So with each, with each business sale, you have your allocation of purchase price, the 85 94. So that form gets reported yep. to somebody I'm just curious to know yep. whether or not that would lead me to the water of how many sales there are. And if, and if I find, and if I do get a response, cause it, uh, this has been gosh, six months I've been waiting. And so anyway, yep. if I, if I get some better stats, I'll send them your way. Uh, please do. Because I, I mean, we both know we're going to see the quarterly stats come out from biz buy sell about the number of, of small businesses that sell. Right. And if it's a good, if it's a good quarter, they're going to say something like uh, sales are up 30 percent <laughs> over last year. And every broker that's out there is going to use that as a plug for sales are up 30 percent. Now's the time to sell your business. And then we're going to look at the numbers and we're going to see that biz by sales numbers went from twelve hundred to, you know, twelve hundred and seventy five. And you do the math on that. And that's like point zero 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 two percent of the small businesses that are out there. I hope the odds are better than that, man. I'm, I'm with you. Well, since uh, I want to be sensitive to our time. So. So one piece of advice to give our listeners before uh, that'll make the most immediate impact on the business. I, mean, I, I know you talked about the wall. Is there anything else? Yeah, well, I mean, if, if I'm talking to a small business owner and I know they're going their own way um, on this topic, here, here's my recommendation. Um, half an hour a month. Put something in your calendar. Uh, right. Schedule it. Have it repeat. Something that forces you to take and pay attention to this topic uh, that is the single most critical financial transaction that you will have as a small business owner Odds are you're not going to pay attention to it until you're ready to sell. Uh, do yourself a favor, get your business ready to sell before you're ready to sell. And you do that by giving conscious engagement to this topic on a regular basis. Doesn't have to be hours, doesn't have to be every day or every week, but every month, put a half an hour in your calendar, read an article, take a look at the newsletter, do something uh, to engage the topic. Yeah, what's the best way we can connect with you? I know exitoasis.com. Um, I, I will put in the show notes the link to your newsletter as well as the link to your course. Yep. Any place else that you're hanging out? Uh, that's where I'd start it. it. We'll keep it basic. We'll keep the content clear. We don't, uh, we're not selling you stuff there. Um, the, uh, signing up for the newsletter is going to get a copy of our free ebook. Um, it, it, engage the topic. If we can help you do that, great. If, if, 
if you find someone else's content that's on our site and they speak more clearly to you, yeah. chase after them. Engage this topic. Find a way um, to do yourself the favor of, of thinking about your future. No, man. You, like I said earlier, I was looking forward to it, and you delivered exactly what I had hoped you would. And, I, I, and I'm so grateful for the time. It's, uh, I hope this is the, the first of many conversations we get to have. Uh, it would be my pleasure, Ed. I enjoyed it. All right, buddy. Well, cheers. Thanks again. Thank you for joining the Defenders of Business Value podcast. If you're preparing your business for sale, visit LegacyTransitionAdvisors.com or text EXIT to 35893 to begin your journey to maximum saleable value. If you want more episodes packed with strategies to transfer maximum value in your business, visit DefendersOfBusinessValue.com. Better yet, subscribe now so you don't miss the future episodes. This program is copyright Legacy Transition Advisors, LLC. All rights reserved.